years since this place played host to a Big East matchup. And today, the Huskies welcome the ninth-ranked Creighton Blue Jays on FS1. With the coach, Steve Lavin, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. Exciting day. And, and coach, this today becomes the official welcome back to the Big East for UConn. Well, Kevin, it doesn't get any better than this. A national power returns to its rightful place in the Big East Conference. I, I mean, almost 3,000 days since UConn beat Providence in this building. I said celebration. Uh, could be a battle, depending on the uh, prism you look at this one through because it comes the party crashers that's Creighton. It sets up a matchup of two of the better cards in the league. Yeah, Zagorowski and Book Knight, orchestrators, playmakers, shot makers, the ball will be in their hand late clock and late game situations. Two great leaders. Now let's look at the starting lineups <laughs> sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. For Creighton, it's the all junior and senior lineup. UConn, on the other hand, starting Josh Carlton. He's back into the starting unit today. And away we go from stores. Excellent officiating crew, by the way, as well. Pat Driscoll, Tony Chiazza, and Tim Clockerty. And here we go. Glad you're with us today on this Sunday. And speaking of officials, Kevin, very interesting to see how this game is called from the outset. Uh, these are aggressive veteran teams, and UConn in particular prefers that hand-to-hand -hand combat in terms of ball pressure. Very physical team that hasn't played a game, by the way, in 17 days. A Big East battle, but it's the first ever meeting between these two teams. This is Isaiah Whaley before the shot clock expires. UConn on the board first. And Whaley comfortable facing the rim, creating off the bounce, a smooth on that stop and pop jumper. That's the senior from Gastonia, North Carolina. That's Segarowski, who we spotlighted a moment ago. He slips. There's that ball hawking, smothering ball pressure employed by the Huskies. Damian Jefferson, no. Bishop saves it, stays here. It's a much different opponent for Creighton today. Played St. John's a few days ago. Of course, that team employs so much pressure. The difference here for UConn, much more size and height to deal with a few days later. Yeah, a more rugged uh, UConn team, St. John's building. As the season goes along, they'll improve dramatically as Mike Anderson employing that full court pressure scheme, but it takes time for the newcomers to adapt and adjust. And foul is on Tyrese Martin. Creighton at five and two. It's only losses to Kansas and Marquette earlier this week. So it's trying to close out its first week of Big East play with a bang. The lob to Bishop is off the mark. Good idea. Good alignment on that out-of-bounds play. A little flex offense off the inbound along the baseline just didn't execute or finish. Here's Creighton. They get organized in early offense as well as any team in the country. If they don't get something in terms of the fast break, then they set up and try and move the ball and execute as they did on that possession. And that is what Creighton does best. Let them fly from deep, but also hit them. This team hits from beyond the arc at a 40% clip, and it's Damian Jefferson with the first triple. Book Knight with the answer. Good counter punch. Punch, counter punch. And Damian Jefferson picking up from where he left off in his last outing, a near triple-double. Zagorowski's pocket, book night. Count the basket. How did that go in? The razzle dazzle. It all started with defense. That ball hockey defense. Cole there laying it out. Gets on the floor. Book night picks it up. And the midair body control, taking it from one side of the rim to the other, using the body to protect the ball from the defender. A little scoop shot off the window. Chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. That's on page one of the 
play through the end of the play, uh, a manual, if you will. So the three-point play is good for Booknight. He has an early six. The sophomore from Brooklyn. How about Cole out top? See him down in his stance. Flexed, coiled. Turning Zagorowski. Jefferson with his second hit. A play through the hot hand. And that's what makes this Creighton offense so prolific. A number of three-point shooters in terms of players able to bomb from long distance. And UConn has to match the energy and the intensity that this Creighton team brings to the table. Mitch Ballock. Got it. What pretty basketball. Penetration there by Damian Jefferson. And then just leaned around on the baseline to create that window for an excellent pass right into Zagorowski's wheelhouse. Bottoms. Creighton, three of four from deep. Book Knight thought about the step back. Whaley to Carlton. That one might have gotten blocked by Bishop. That yeah, was a good block by Bishop from behind. Mahoney leaves it short. Dan Hurley was asking that this week. Would his team be able to match the intensity required for a Big East battle? Remember, this team has, hasn't played a game since December 3rd, and Zagorowski takes it in for two. Well, Zagorowski uh, maneuvering at a pace where he's under control, on balance, and therefore can make good reads or judgments when to give it up, and in that case, able to finish. Martin, that shot strong. Bishop running the floor, and he's got two free throws. As expected, high energy, fast paced start in this one between Creighton and UConn. About the defense, Cole getting on the floor early. Book night, picking up the garbage, taking it to the hoop. Right back at you, Jefferson. The jump stop delivers the dime. Bottoms. He's already hit three triples. And after an 8-0 run, has a three-point advantage. Inside Gample Pavilion. Dan Hurley in his third season as the head man at UConn, the 47-year-old from Jersey City. Coach, he's got winning in his DNA. He did so at Wagner at Rhode Island, and he's starting to do so here at UConn. Yeah, a basketball family. Uh, Bob Sr., a Hall of Fame basketball coach, obviously the illustrious career at St. Anthony's High School. And then his brother, Bobby Hurley, out west, uh, did an excellent job first at Buffalo and now has built Arizona State into a point where they're a national powerhouse. So uh, you understand that this family, when it comes to basketball, uh, outstanding teachers, outstanding coaches. This is somebody in, in Dan Hurley who played in the Big East at Seton Hall back in the 90s. He was very patient, waiting for the right opportunity, and this was the one three years ago when it was offered. Now the question is, after the coal basket, is that going to count? The foul was either before or after the make, and that's going to get sorted out right now. So the three-pointer is good, and the foul goes against Whaley. And that's his first after the fact. Cole, very productive. Again, just hit that shot from distance. And you see the defense making it hard for Zagorowski to get a catch once he gives it up. There's the seven-footer, Ryan Kochbrenner. So if you can't find Zagorowski, get it to the big man in the paint, who was excellent against St. John's a few days ago. Yeah, and good movement without the basketball, able to catch in stride, elevate, and flush it home over the top. Brandon Adams, strong. That's a great point you bring up, so keep an eye on number one in the white. He may be all over Zagorowski. Number 11 in the Creighton Blue today. You know, it almost creates a four-on-four four if Zagorowski's taken out of the game. Now the Blue Jays have to work as a four-man unit. 
Cockbrenner turns on Whaley, who's one of the best shot blockers in the nation. A foul, though. Cockbrenner getting more comfortable using the bounce, the back down. And, of course, with his size, as the season goes along, Coach McDermott and the staff would like to utilize him more because the one vulnerability of this Blue Jay team is rebounding. And that's an area they can improve upon if Cockbrenner gets more confidence and more minutes. Uh, he brings him that size. So Cockbrenner, the seven-footer on the floor, out comes Isaiah Whaley. He's been UConn's best post defender this season with two fouls. What? Both these teams bring four starters back from last year's, last season's starting lineups, and that's a real helpful element to have experience, especially in a year where there's been this disruption and kind of interruption to your traditional development of a team. Uh, younger teams with new pieces obviously are struggling more because they don't have that experience of last season together as a group. Alex O'Connell, transfer from Duke, playing in his second game. And it affects UConn a bit more than others. This team has experienced two, two separate program pauses since November 5th. Well, there's your mental conditioning, your physical conditioning, there's the timing. There's Sonogo. Smooth on the pirouette, the spin move in the paint. Nice jump hook from close range. The spin back to the left hand. Cockbrenner fighting for it. The push to Cole. Blocking foul. Blocking foul. That's going to be Zagorowski's first. No, it's an offensive foul. And I think the officials, Pat Driscoll there, had it right. It's uh, outside the arc, set, given ground, and Cole initiates the contact. Zagorowski takes it right on the chest in the sternum and sells it well right in front of the official. He's not just one of the better point guards. He's one of the more mature players in this league. Well, we're going back the other way. So Cole, he does get his way this time. Well, not surprisingly, both these teams with a stout physical approach, and you get that from units that have played together, you know, understand one another, and of course, with Danny Hurley, see the turnover. Sonogo there was trying to feed the wing. Teammate goes back door and uh, can't read one another's mind. And there's the turnover. It's Creighton by five. Offensive foul whistle against Damian Jefferson. So we have three straight offensive fouls. First on Jefferson, third on the team. Greg McDermott is wondering, hey, what happened there? This is his 11th season as the head man at Creighton, the reigning Big East coach of the year. Well, and got a piece of the Big East championship regular season last year, a phenomenal season. I think it was a group going into the Big East tournament that had the most momentum of any team in the Big East, and they were capable of winning the postseason tournament and getting to the second weekend of play, at least in the NCAA tournament, if we didn't have the pandemic and shutdown. And they get to, as you alluded to before, they get to run it back. They basically have the entire squad from a year ago. The expectations and potential remains the same. Cole just flung that one up. Cock Cockbrenner affected the shot. Zagorowski into the paint. Lobs to Bishop. Rebound down to Sonogo. This nifty playmaking. Bishop not able to convert or finish. But we saw Zagorowski's playmaking skills on display there. Almost like, misfires. almost like Steve Nash when he keeps the dribble alive, explores, investigates, takes it inside, brings it all the way back out. 
the key is about the change of speed, right? Not necessarily sometimes the handles. Shiftiness, too. Excellent footwork, change of direction, change of speed. You got that one, a little too much velocity on it. Rare turnover from Zagorowski. His team's ahead by five on the road. The crowds this year is like a funhouse mirror. Who's real and, and who is it? Some family, of course, and of the players in attendance, but amongst the fake crowd fatheads. Well, Where's the Steve Lavin fathead, by the way? You know, it's an example of how we adjust, modify, and uh, coaches have had to do that, their teams, the athletes, obviously, and... Uh, you and I as broadcasters, right? Here we have this plexiglass between us. Uh, we're in our respective bubbles, practicing the mask mechanics. And so uh, even student sections and the marketing people at each university trying to find ways creatively uh, to engage. And all necessary to make this go, college basketball this year. It's such a salute to the discipline and the drive of these players, too. The stringent and immense protocols that they're under to make these games happen. Uh, these games happen. They deserve our utmost respect. So after the miss, UConn gets a second chance. Andre Jackson is out on the floor for the first time, but another turnover. Yeah, good call there by Pat Driscoll. Good position. Book Knight just shuffled the feet before he dribbled the basketball. And I'm sure that's part of the 17-day layoff. And you come back into the opening Big East game for UConn. And the nerves, the butterflies, the adrenaline, uh, the vital signs go north. And you're just a bit out of sync. Uh, it's going to take some time. Jackson steals it. Gaffney finds Book Knight. And a new 20 second shot clock for the home team. Book Knight is UConn's leading scorer, poised for a breakout sophomore season. Late the shot clock. And Adams' is three is off the mark. A good possession defensively by the Blue Jays there. Mitch Ballock with some excellent defense on the ball. Guard Book Knight leveling off his dribble penetration. A good double on the post and then good rotation as well. And the box out, which is the period at the end of the sentence or how you complete a defensive possession is to rebound the ball. That is the key for Creighton this year. We know that this offense is such a freight train. But the road to the final four will be determined by the strides Creighton makes defensively this year. And they've already held UConn to two of 12 shooting from beyond the arc. Zagorowski, wide open, Bishop. How did that happen? Well, a nifty set by Creighton there. Bishop initially with a dribble handoff, and he came back and re-screened. He separated with the roll, and Zagorowski draws so much attention and able to deliver that dime to an open bishop. Sudogo pumps. Misses with the left hand. Past the midway mark of the first half. Creighton leads by seven. Cole blanket Zagorowski lets it fly. Way off the mark. You've highlighted Cole's defense of Zagorowski at times already. Now, he's been able to find some teammates, but one of three from the field. Well, it's a constant when you play UConn. They work as a unit defensively, and they are very sound on their ball hawking, ball pressure. Jackson, no. Lock. Good cut to the corner. Yeah, he nails it. Movement without the basketball. You'll see the Blue Jays, they play well in pairs, almost like dance partners. And they read the defense well and play as partners well. That's two-man basketball executed precisely. Signs of maturity. It's a very unselfish team. Anybody can be selfish. 
and be the guy to score on any given night. Second chance for UConn. That one's off the window and in, and it's Adams. A good stick to itiveness. Opportunistic. That's what the Huskies will do to you. Excellent offensive rebounding team, and it comes down to their mindset. It's emphasized in practice, but they're tenacious in their approach on the boards. Zagorowski. Cockbrenner kicks. Denzel Mahoney. Got it. Look, sharing the basketball, distributing the ball, this democratic approach that the Blue Jays take, and it's why they have the balanced scoring game to game. You can't key on one player because they'll make you pay. Someone else steps up and joins the party offensively. As a team, Creighton shoots 40% from deep. Four of seven, Coach, from deep in this game. Well, it's because they enjoy making that extra pass. Mahoney with the goggles dials one's up. Let's take a look at the Blue Jays in terms of playing in pairs or tandem. Zagorowski here. Tries to turn the corner, draws three UConn defenders, and then delivers the dime inside to Bishop for the easy flush. And that's two-man basketball, but the key was Zagorowski delaying just enough, keeping his dribble alive, and inviting, baiting multiple defenders three times. Three players there that came to help, which allowed Bishop to be wide open. Yeah, it feels like his best skill is the instincts then that he brings to the table. It's vision, it's intuition, it's instincts. And uh, again, coming from a basketball family, uh, it's in the DNA. Both his mother and father played, uh, his brothers have played, his sister has played. So uh, as a result, you have someone that has a very high basketball IQ and feel for the game. Older brother plays for the Orlando Magic. That's the former Syracuse star, Michael Carter-Williams. His twin Max at Franklin Pierce Base. He just finished up her career at Bryant. A household of competitiveness. And that's where that drive was born. UConn, by the way, is one of its last nine from the field. And the intensity is ratcheted up. Excellent. What'd you just say? Two-man game, but Mahoney missed the right-hand scoop. UConn needs one. Gaffney back to Cole for three. Down and out. You'll see that push, first five, six seconds, where the Blue Jays get down the floor, get organized, get to their spots, run their lanes, and then use good judgment. If they've got the numbers, uh, they'll make you pay, whether it's a three or a layup. And then if not, they run their offense and give themselves a chance to get fouled, wait for the defense to break down to get a good look at the basket. And what did Dan Hurley tell us this week? He was nervous about the level of his intensity his team would have for a game like this. What, 17 days without a game due to a COVID pause. Another nice cut. It's Bishop with the slam. And, and Dan said he had to kind of create a cauldron of intensity this week. Right now, UConn down 12. And he's to answer the bell sooner or later. One of his last 10 for the field. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, banking with Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like... It's looking kind of chilly out today. What am I going to wear? I think I'll go with... A cardigan. Yep. Even easier than that. And with a top-rated app that lets you deposit checks and transfer money anytime, anywhere, is it really even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Creighton shooting 63% from the field. The ninth-ranked Blue Jays are up by 12. Well, and they're also shooting four of seven from long range, which creates that excellent spacing. Here, Bishop gives it up. Axe is always going to set the screen. Instead, just creates a foot race with that dive to the basket. Well delivered. Easy deuce. Even right there, that's a pass you think would be slipped into Whaley. Look, I think it was Bishop who got a piece off the backboard. Here come the Blue Jays. Mahoney. Doesn't get the bounce. Where does UConn turn to right now? Well, I think, you know, you continue 
to run your sets, uh, but attacking the basket, uh, not forcing. You have to play smart basketball there. Uh, over penetration, better off initiate your offense, get some ball reversals instead of going one on one into a crowd and making a low percentage play. Sixth Huskies turnover. Mahoney had it stripped away. Nice defense. It was book night, and he gets the foul. That's the first on Mahoney. And what you're seeing here early with UConn is what Coach Danny Early discussed with us over the phone in our talks. We take one more look at Mahoney in isolation, trying to back down and forcing the issue a bit and picks up the offensive foul. But offense is predicated on timing. Uh, you know, the ability to make reads and cutting and reading the defense. And so when you go 17 days between games, uh, you're clearly at a disadvantage where Creighton, uh, they're in the midst of a nice run here, practices and games uh, against high-level opponents. And so they're more in sync. Whaley draws the foul on Bishop. This is Creighton's third game this week. It started with the loss to Marquette. A rebound against St. John's, in which the Blue Jays pummeled them for 94 points. Well, I like their response mechanism to a loss. That's a good sign of your team's mettle or character. Uh, they went on the road to St. John's, and St. John's closed the gap but then Crate went on a 22 run to put away the Johnnies. And uh, that's a sign of a response or resilience you want to see in your team. Book Knight draws the eighth Creighton team foul. The first on Ballock. With Steve Lavin, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. You are watching Big East Basketball, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep, there's only one. Second personal. Book night is the uber athletic. Yeah, we well, seem to be. Yeah, he has that next level prototype game. Wisely returned this year to continue to improve and refine his skill set, uh, develop his overall strength. He will. Yeah, coach, he's going to be the next great. UConn guard, the likes of which we haven't seen since the other side of Kemba Walker about a decade ago. He was short on both those free throw attempts, and that usually comes back to the legs. Epperson wasn't looking. Martin pushes. Book Knight, a little out of control, but finds Cole. Some bodying with Mitchell. And a sophomore from Omaha gets whistled for his first. So that sends the Huskies to the line. Well, this is one way you chip away the deficit. I've always drawn the parallel of free throws and out-of-bounds execution being the equivalent of the kicking game in football. Chip away through free throws, getting on the boards, a couple out-of-bounds plays. Before the free throws, we're going to get a review. You saw the conference between Driscoll, Chiazza, and Clockerty as well. And the only thing I can think was there. There was contact between Mitchell and Cole. Was there an elbow that might have went to either's face? Might have been a little bit of a hook by Cole, but they can't reverse that call. I didn't see any flagrant. Well, it appears that Clockerty and Chiazza are looking at a prior foul before the Mitchell foul. A 
little bit of a, a little bit of a lull, pardon, at this point in the game. UConn has been cold, just 26% shooting from the field. Creighton has not been able to extend its lead in the last few minutes. So it's the there will be a change to a prior foul. On the beat line, number one, RJ Cole. To shoot one and one. So a foul that was previously whistled against Jefferson has been changed to Mitch Ballock. Well, Cole knocks one down. If you're a UConn, you want to get it under double digits. An opportunity here where you can even cut the deficit more, but when you see the ball go through the net from the free throw line, it gives you more confidence. And on your next possession, you want to get a touch, not force, but play through. The players just got some free throws or just hit a shot. When you're searching, you're in the desert offensively. Now that's one way to increase the odds that you're going to generate better offense. Mahoney drives on Martin and floats it in. Mahoney a tough matchup because of his ability to play over the top of smaller defenders, uh, but he can slide inside as well, and he's comfortable in the perimeter as we've seen him stroke a three-pointer earlier this afternoon. The senior is so versatile on the offensive end. Book night. Fall away. That's pretty. A little bit of life here for UConn offensively. Now they need to string a couple stops together. Cole on Mahoney. That shot is denied. Carlton with the rejection. Yeah, good help defensively by the Huskies. So often the block comes from a secondary defender. You have good pressure on the ball. Cole here sliding. Mahoney starts to have daylight, and so quickly it closes down with the help by Carlton. Mm. With the long reach, the 6'11 senior from North Carolina. He played quite a bit in that win against Southern Cal on December 3rd. Got the start today. Jones left it short. Chance for UConn to slice it back to single digits. Carlton runs the floor. Oh, an excellent pass as well. Leading Carlton to the basket. Didn't need a dribble, just catch and lay it up. UConn's first field goal in five minutes. Big East opener for UConn and its return to the conference. That shot swirls out for Mitchell. Now the first ever meeting between these two. Chance to build on this run by the Huskies. Into the hands of Book Knight. Here's Cole into the paint. Traveling, Traveling violation. Time out on the floor. Cole disappointed by the call. How about Mahoney? Now just showing the skills to maneuver off the bounce, the runner, Book Knight, the stop and pop, smooth, timeout. An eight point lead for Creighton inside Gamble Pavilion. Jim Jackson's Buckeyes, by the way, got a little test from Northwestern yesterday. They seem to be poised for the college football playoff though. It's that time of the year. <laughs> yes. Zagorowski back in. He has made an impact without scoring today, but defensively, R.J. Cole has locked him up. Well, UConn now, Kevin, on a 6-2 run. As you alluded to, a couple stops go a long way. Jones is going to get two free throws, and that was Mahoney. He, he is everywhere. On the offensive side of the ball, kept the possession alive. And two free throws coming for the sophomore from Orlando. First foul on Carlton. And with those goggles, reminds me a little bit of uh, Horace Grant. Got some of his game as well. <laughs> yeah. Gives away a few inches 
but the activity and the catalyst on the defensive side of the ball. And then offensively, the versatility. And Coach McDermott deploys him well to take advantage of his particular skill set. Uh, they'll look for mismatches and exploit them. Credit Mahoney, who shifts into his starting role this year. He expanded his offensive game over the summer, became a bit more versatile. I think Horace Grant needed glasses that were a little more, a, li a bit more sleeker like his. True. <laughs> Kurt Rambis back in the day. No, nope, people nice. forget no. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had goggles That's right. as well. So uh, goggles and uh, having game have gone hand in hand through the history of the game. <laughs> yeah. Ballock, he is the marksman. He's going to go down as one of the better three-point shooters in program history. Martin trying to take it the length of the floor. Book night is everywhere, and he's hit a double figures with 10. Yeah, fortuitous. Uh, an air ball. But the aggressiveness of Book Knight in pursuing the ball leads to a putback. He averages close to 19 a game. He's been in double figures all four of UConn's game. It's been a truncated schedule so far for the Huskies. Back on the floor for the first time in 17 days. And Zagorowski continues to struggle 104 from the field. Huskies making a big run here. A chance to go into half with momentum and completely shift the energy of this game. A 6-0 Huskies run. Carlton doubled. Nothing there. Who's open? Book Knight puts it up, puts it in. How about the touch? Tough angle along the baseline to operate. Made it look easy. Mahoney with the answer. Well, that's what they do. They take your baskets away with a basket of their own because they get the ball inbounds and get down the floor, get organized, and they counterpunch with the best. We expected this one to be exciting. UConn's physicality against Creighton's highly efficient offense and rhythm. Book night, give them one more. Well, straight line drive, Creighton slow to rotate defensively. Chance for the old-fashioned three-point play for Book Knight. Here's just that quick first step. Sizes up Mahoney. Able to get the angle, absorb the foul, and still finish. Didn't necessarily elevate. It was more of a long jump. But good body control, hand-eye coordination to put it down off the window. Book Knight, so he, he represents stores, but he was raised out in Brooklyn. Crown Heights neighborhood to be exact. Kimani Young was key in his recruitment, and he recruits that area, New York City, so well. And he is really poised for a breakout season. Well, Kimani Young, a New Yorker, spent time on Richard Pitino's staff at Minnesota as well. He graduated from UTEP. He's been involved in AAU basketball, basketball at every level for that matter. Kalkbrenner got it blocked on the follow. Carlton with his second rejection. And Book Knight steals the pass. UConn, the aggressor right now. One more chance, down and out. So what a change, a shift. A game of runs basketball is, and now the Huskies on an 11-2 run. Book Knight's had nine points in that run, so he has stepped up. And I think we're going to see this from UConn, half to half, game to game, as... They now are finally back playing basketball after a 17-day layoff between games. So you naturally are going to improve as you start to get some burn, some reps. Book Knight has 10 of the 12 of this 12-2 Huskies run. I want to get a Five stop seconds. here. It's Jones with two to the basket. A foul on Carlton, and Dan Hurley does not like it before the horn. Have to see it again. Let's Didn't take a look. look yeah. Like much contact, kind of a dipsy do scoop shot by Jones. Boy, tough to see. Uh, official. Clockerty had a better angle than we did. He was closer to it as well, but uh, if I'm Danny Hurley, I'm not happy either. Oh, 
would assume our officials are taking a peek at how much time is on the clock. There could be 0.2. Bottom right. See Carlton come over. Good contest. And look for the signal, by the way, on the baseline. Boy, that looks like a Spalding sandwich. I know we're looking about the, at the clock here, but look to be all leather. What we call Spalding sandwich, or if it's a Wilson Jet, Wilson Jet sandwich. <laughs> I think Clockerty's signal came at maybe 0.1, maybe 0.2. Almost inconsequential. This kind of ice is Jones, by the way. And this call, the foul itself, is another example of what's mandated coast to coast, top down, for all officials to give the benefit of the doubt to the offensive player. And that's in the spirit of freedom of movement, hoping for higher scores, more entertainment value. Uh, you can argue the other side. Uh, it's interesting philosophical discussion over a couple beers at a bar. But these officials are actually calling the game. They've been mandated to call uh, a style to protect the offense. And uh, defense, when it's tie base, is the loser. The determination is 0.4. So not as inconsequential. Jones, who's 75% from the stripe, is trying to extend Creighton's lead. Impressive run by UConn, independent of this foul call and free throw opportunities here late in the first half. But uh, what you would expect from a Danny Hurley team, gritty, tough, resilient, and found a way to crawl back in this game. And of course, Book Knight showing his skills and talent. How about 16 of UConn's 29 points for the sophomore from Brooklyn? And he did it in a variety of ways. On the drive from deep at the free throw line, that is the versatile game of one James Booknight. UConn ends the half on a 12-4 run. On the other side, we go to our Los Angeles studio with Mike Hill and Jim Jackson. At the break, great by four. First ever meeting between these two teams gave us a good first half. Creighton leads by four. Start of the second half in just a few moments. The two elite guards for both of these teams had different types of first halves. James Booknight has balled out for 16 points, six of 10 from the field. Marcus Zagorowski, on the other hand, just two points. The stat comparison sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. How have the first halves played out for both of these two? Well, it's been a game of runs, as basketball is, and whoever wins the majority of those runs is 99% of the time the victor. And uh, Creighton got into a flow offensively, was working well in concert, uh, shared the ball well in terms of their assists to basket ratio, but give UConn credit. 6-0 uh, advantage on points off turnovers, a 4-0 advantage on second chance points, and those 10 points uh, off their defense and second shots, those are effort, tenacity uh, type of points, and that's how they crawled back in this game. Of course, book night down the stretch was lights out. Uh, 10 of the 12 points coming down the stretch for UConn were all through book night. Bishop misfires on the first look for Creighton and Greg McDermott. How did he describe it to us? He said Dan Hurley type teams are always defensive oriented. It is in the DNA of those types of teams. Book Knight has dominated on the baseline and he goes up and under again. How about it, Kevin? The scoop shots from one side of the rim to the other. And again, the body control and the ability to hang in the air and still keep eyes on target. How about the dive by Book Knight? Now he is surgical in his passing as well. Just got it going. After the Whaley basket and now foul, UConn's run extended to 16 to four, getting back to the first half. Oh. Uh, just a great read. Whaley delivers that nice back door cut like an option quarterback. And here working off the high ball screen, an excellent pass to Whaley, who separates well, targets for the ball. And Booknight just spoon feeds the big fella. 
He's got 18 points. That is the athleticism that Hurley has lauded now for at least a year. Creighton needs the spark now. Jefferson, great dish, and Bishop with the two-hand stuff. A high percentage finisher. Bishop takes shots he can make. My kind of guy understands his role and embraces that role. Field goal percentage at 72% on the year. It's Creighton by two. And UConn's Big East opener. A return to action of sorts. Not just to the conference, but to action as well. UConn's first game in 17 days. Offensive foul whistled against Carlton. That's his third. Here's the drive, the dish, over the top, the easy flush for Bishop. It's just a lose-lose situation. You either have to allow Jefferson the easy look or confront him, and that leaves you susceptible to the pass. Yeah, Damian Jefferson, just one of those players that brings a multitude of skills to the game. Mahoney lost it. That's the 10th Creighton turnover. And that's the Blue Jays' season average. Book Knight got the three. Well, he's in the zone right now, Kevin. Trying to get him the ball. Milk that hot hand. Seen a little bit of an NBA flavor on the college level here by Danny Hurley. In terms of going back to your main gun, why not? He check. 21 points for the sophomore. Carlton, nice defense. It stays with Creighton. So interesting to watch UConn within this game gain a better comfort level, uh, playing with a more cohesive approach at both offense and defense. This is UConn's first lead since the 723 mark. Make it the 1723 mark of the first half. Jefferson for three. Good defense on Zagorowski there by UConn. Really selling out on Zagorowski. You, Two or three players crowding him. Just no open looks. You've said that a lot today. Good defense on Zagorowski. So now the question is, who is that last touch by? It was initially ruled UConn ball, changed back to Creighton, and I think what Dan Hurley was asking was how, how could he see it from that angle? The initial rule was UConn basketball. Instead, the Blue Jays take it. He's challenging the officials on their mechanics, their fundamentals, their position on the floor when making a call. We talk about help side defense and spacing on offense and how important that is, but it also is critical that officials get to the right position to make calls. This is a foul, by the way, on UConn. And watch the tumbling bishop. They whistle Cole for the foul. Creighton is now shooting below 40% from the field. Uh, UConn stunting as well towards Zagorowski on all his touches. Some more smothering defense there. Creighton for fortunate to recuperate. Zagorowski needed it. That's the word. Recover the ball. <laughs> Zagorowski, the beneficiary. He needs a rejuvenation. That's just his second make. A reincarnation as UConn comes back to the Big East. Just wanted to keep the alliteration going. Yep, we need to. <laughs> Drinking my coffee over here. This is Book Knight. Another? Yes! A new career high for James Book Knight. He's got 24. Yeah, there's just an ease on his offensive catches. And the confidence now, he shoots at a bigger target, a bigger circumference on the rim. And right back at you. How about it? Mitch Ballock. Great. The senior marksman from Eudora, Kansas, gives Creighton the lead. Well, that's another example of taking the team's basket away by getting down the floor so quickly, getting set up, and launching a bomb. This is turning into a compelling one. 
Already four lead changes in this half alone. Seven total today. Cole, no. Martin with a critical offensive rebound. Who else do you put the ball into the hands of? It's Book Knight. Driving. Lays it in. And the foul. He is a wizard today around the rim. Why not go back to book night as they have late in the first half and early in the second half. Book night down the lane with the finger roll. UConn on a run. Ta -da. UConn, a place that it dominated. Well, and UConn is back in their rightful place uh, in the Big East Conference. It's just a good marriage. Uh, everyone wins in terms of the respective fan bases within this conference. Uh, it helps recruiting if you're a basketball coach in this league as well. And um, this is just a great thing for college basketball, not only the Big East. The conference splintered in 2013. UConn was left to join the American, of course, thanks to its football responsibilities as well, but rejoined for basketball last summer, officially beginning this season. Great take. Yeah, great take for Creighton. It, it is, it just feels right when UConn is good. And that elite level of play at the fans and college hoops expected just hasn't been there, but this program is turning the corner again in Dan Hurley's third year. And guess who's going back to the free throw line? James Booknight. You know, and that's good coaching. Put your players in position to where they can take advantage of matchups. And to this point, Great hasn't found an answer in how to slow down Booknight and how to stop the bleeding. It'll be interesting to see what Coach McDermott does. He's one of the best in the business. I call him a hip pocket coach because he's not afraid to try different things defensively to help his team out. Then what would you do to slow them down? Is it a matchup thing? Is it the number of players you're throwing at them? Well, to me, it's showing a crowd. You know, looking back at Kemba Walker, when we played UConn back in the day, uh, we had a defense that was called the Kemba defense. And it was similar to eight in the box in football, that on all Kemba's catches, we wanted to show him three jerseys at a minimum. But there were times that when he got a catch, he was looking at five jerseys. Not only great ball pressure, but behind that pressure, having that crowd. Crowd, uh, so he can't maneuver into gaps or seams. The Kemba defense, it was it was named That's for when a you star. Know you got game. <laughs> when you use a defense, create a defense off an opponent that just has it going on. Well, Greg McDermott better create the book night defense today. 29 points. He had 16 at half. He has 13 more in six minutes after halftime. And what makes him a tough matchup is he's not only a rocket launcher, but he enjoys being surgical. He makes precise passes. He's improving his playmaking skills as well. Sonogo and one. Wow, little NBA continuation for Sonogo. That's Jefferson still on the floor. Coach, this is the the moves underneath by the big man. Yeah, comfortable. Uh, shows the ball. Takes it to the other side of the rim. Just a little shot fake. That's something you work on in post perimeter. And he actually used his left arm there to kind of upend Damian Jefferson along the way to score in a basket. So uh, showing his skills. The freshman from Mali, one of the latest top 100 rated recruits. That Dan Hurley has been able to bring to stores. This is UConn's largest lead. It fell behind by 12, right around the midway mark of the first half. It looked like Creighton was going to take off at that point. It got a little careless, and UConn turned all those turnovers into points, and that was when James Booknight started to ignite as well. And now Creighton, the team that is cold. I think you're seeing the rust is now off this UConn team. It takes a while to dust off the cobwebs or work the rust off after you've had 17 days without playing a game. That book night look, by the way, it looked good. He's three of seven from deep. 
Mahoney to the corner. Jones puts it up and puts it in. That's a big three. It's back to a one-point game. And there's that playmaking of Mahoney. Comfortable at the top of the floor, surveying and choosing the right option in terms of sharing the basketball. UConn more purposeful here in their offensive sets and alignments. Gaffney. Nope. Sunogo battles for the board. It's a tie-up. Zegarowski forces the jump ball. Possession arrow favors UConn. Well, Sunogo is emblematic of this UConn Husky team just getting better as the game goes along. Only a freshman. Imagine the upside as he goes from year to year here as a Husky. Bright future. This Creighton team returns four or five starters, as we talked about earlier in the broadcast. Won the Big East last year, so they're not going quietly into the night or the afternoon, for that matter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Zinogo, he was scared by just how open he was. Yeah, kind of caught in between there of thinking pass and then shot. Jones, Bishop with the tap back. Bishop, some nifty footwork, staying after it. One hand control tap, made it look easy. He's the 6'7 junior from Missouri. He plays the five at times. Yet this, the offense and the style for Greg McDermott the last couple of years has kind of been the small ball look. Bishop though, has been reliable at that position. Late in the shot clock, book night. Forced to give it up. Underneath to Martin for the reverse slam. It's a beautiful basketball. Good basketball habits. Looking opposite. Making that extra pass. Looked like it was going to be a reverse layup. Instead, a double pump slam. Sunogo, big fella. Looking opposite. Huskies. Welcome back to Big East Basketball, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep, there's only one. With Steve Lab and Kevin Fitzgerald with you. James Booknight is on a rampage. The phenomenal numbers, just piping hot. And yet, he also is distributing the basketball. He's not forcing the action. He's making good reads. He's maneuvering, seeing the game in terms of good judgments and choices. I don't expect him to be out very long. Expect him to be subbed back in as soon as possible. Yes. Creighton held a 12-point lead in this game back in the first half. UConn went on a great run to close out the first period and into the start of the early portions of the second half. Well, Coach Early will be watching very closely see how things go because Creighton could go on runs. They score in bunches and with Book Knight on the bench, but even more of a concern. Cole, the spin down the lane and a flailing layup is off the mark. Adams offensive rebound. How did this one get to Cole? I mean, it's all the traffic. Adams fell on the loose ball, then was able to bounce it through flailing hands and arms, and Cole has two free throws. Wild possession, but stick to this and staying after it. And that's a hallmark of Danny Hurley's teams. Uh, have to be fortunate as well, the ball coming out of that scrum. And Cole, the smallest player on the court, diminutive, but is the one at the rim that draws the foul. How about it? Junior from Union, New Jersey. So R.G. Coley starts at Howard. Scored over 20 a game in two years down in D.C. He plays for Dan Hurley. He also played for Bob Hurley. He was coached by Dan's father at St. Anthony in his high school days. He can't get away from the Hurleys. Yeah, baptized, but with good reason, by the way. Baptized, inculcated mm -hmm. by the Hurleys. Hawkbrenner back into the game. Ball 
the pressure. He has held Zagorowski to two of eight shooting from the field. Gaffney, though, with the hand check on O'Connell. And that cannot be understated. Cole limiting Zagorowski today. Well, making him work to get all catches and the cumulative effect that that can have on a player uh, in terms of their legs, maybe not having the energy as the game goes along at the offensive end of the floor. Uh, to be able to separate, do what Zagorowski does best, you need those feet and legs to be fresh. Oh, and Zagorowski's a bona fide All-American. That's an offensive foul on Jones. <laughs> Jones taking it into the lane. Somewhat of a forearm, I wouldn't call it a forearm shiver or fully extending the arm, uh, red grain style, or like some great running backs that use that stiff arm. Uh, but again, that was off of Gaffney's foot, ricochet to Martin. The ill advised shot by Martin there along the baseline. Just whistle it over the rim. Here's Zagorowski. Screen comes. Into the paint. Floats it up and it rolls through. Really took his time there. Stretched the double team. Uh, then was back in single coverage and reversed. Came back the other direction all the way to the hoop. Coach, nine lead changes, five ties this half alone. Wildly compelling first ever meeting between these two. The old and the new. UConn back in the Big East. Creighton, of course, one of the freshest teams. And a foul after the turnover. Just basic passing and catching. And guess who's back in? Mr. Booknight. 29 points today, a career high on 10 of 15 shooting. That is efficiency. I think if you're Danny Earlier, you're pleased that you took him out of the game, but you didn't lose big ground. Yep. And now hoping that he's got a little more energy in the fuel tank for the home stretch. Rattles out for Jones. Martin shot blocked. Smothered by Cockbrenner. Second chance didn't go for Martin. He kept it alive. It stays with the Huskies. I like Martin's aggressiveness, but has to make better judgments here. When you're double teamed, you got the elbows down your tonsils. They're draped on you like wet towels. You've done your job. Uh, sit down and give it up or pocket pass. But uh, to continue to shoot that ball, it's a low percentage play. Cockbrenner blocked that one with his wrist. Yeah, you've done your job. You drive it to the hole, you bring two or three opponents' jerseys to help. Uh, then the math is favorable somewhere else. Give it up. But I like his tenaciousness. And that's why Danny Hurley's playing him. That's the fourth foul on Cockbrenner. It's the sixth team foul on Crate. And both of these teams will go to the bonus on the next whistle. Tied up at 51. The first of our quadruple header of Big East Hoops on FS1 is a delightful one to begin the Sunday afternoon. Book night. Playing around with Mahoney. Into the paint. Braden with a five on four. Patient possession. Whaley the contest and Jones misses everything. But it's gonna stay here, it was off of Martin's left hand. Yeah, the ball came off the rim on that shot at an odd angle, and as a result, Martin not able to secure it with two hands. This is Jones. Mahoney for three, short. Some good defense here being applied 
by the Huskies. No surprise. Looking to take a lead. Whaley! A good interior passing as well. Whaley showing the verts, the ups, the remarkable hops, and again, ball pressure on Zagorowski has been relentless. Different players have had the responsibility of Garden Zagorowski, Gaffney of late, Cole throughout the afternoon as well. Mahoney picks up the Jefferson miss. Either a jump or a timeout. It is a jump ball, and Creighton keeps possession. That's a high percentage look. We Isaiah Whaley has UConn ahead by two at home. Calhoun was the head coach of this program. Saw a lot of wins during his tenure as the head man at UConn from 1986 to 2012. Those seven Big East tournament titles, Coach. That's still time for the most for any Big East program. And by the way, UConn hasn't been in this conference for seven years. And keep in mind that, you know, he had Elite Eight teams that were capable of cutting down the nets. In particular, 1995, his team, I thought, if they weren't in the West region and going against UCLA in the Elite Eight, uh, they would have been a Final Four team, a team capable of winning a national championship. So you could build the case his feet for what he did in stores, Connecticut, building a dynasty is as great an accomplishment as any in the history of college basketball. Think they ran, about that for a minute. Uh, they ran into, by the way, your UCLA dynasty out there on your guys' way to a national Jim, championship. Yep, Jim Herrick, the head coach, was fortunate to be an assistant. But that team with Ray Allen and Donnie Marshall and Kevin Ollie and company was special. It can't be understated, though, back to your point, what Jim Calhoun had built here. I mean, there's comparisons of people in that discussion as we see, again, the aggressive There's Bishop. UConn defense, but Bishop stays with it. And that was created off the Ballock dribble penetration. A Jerry Tarkanian at UNLV, but that was one championship, what he built in the desert. Uh, I think Lutels at Arizona, one national championship, what he built out west was impressive. But four Final Fours, three national titles, and their fourth national title, Kevin Ollie won, but Jim Calhoun's fingerprints were all over that team. So in my view, it's as impressive a feat as any in the history of college basketball. Adams' three is strong. And Dan Hurley is elevating this program back to the level that you just highlighted from years past. Creighton by two, and Bishop again. Boy, good look. And I like the decisive, quick drop step by Bishop. No hesitation. High percentage finisher. Creighton with some answers. Time out. Back ahead. Yeah, and I like the position uh, that he's carved out down low. Opportunistic here on the second shot. Put back. And a nice little spin. Feels the defense. Maneuvers for the opening, and Deuce down low. He's coming off the double-double against St. John's, and he's bringing the intensity you see there. Now with a team-high 15 points. Always to balance scoring attack for Creighton. The fifth most efficient offense in the country has been tested today. Leads by four, though, with six minutes to go. And the star, James Booknight, who has 29 points, has been held without a basket for the last eight minutes and change. Creighton has clamped down on the star. He hasn't scored since he came out of the game. Baseline drive, difficult shot, free throws are coming. That is his middle name, difficult shot. We have seen him score in so many ways around the rim today. Well, and look how quickly Creighton Helps, collapses, yet he's still able to use the body control and avoid picking up the offensive foul. It reminds me some of a player going way back, Jay Edwards, who played for Bobby Knight at Indiana in the Big Ten from Marion, Indiana, played at Marion High School, and had a similar frame and game in terms of the smoothness, the fluidity. 
uh, Book Knight a bit stronger uh, than Jay Edwards in terms of being stout. Uh, but they both had a tremendous feel for the game offensively and were a joy to watch because of the ease that they play the game with. 31 points. The first Husky with a 30-point game in two years. Well, that may get him back in the flow, uh, seeing the ball go through the net a couple times. Mahoney wide open. And Gaffey could not secure it. That's the second time in this half where a shot coming off the rim in an odd way has led to UConn not being able to secure the ball. Oh, fooled Gaffney. And Creighton gets a lucky break. Jefferson. Back-to-back -back misses from deep. They see UConn again selling out to Zagorowski, uh, basically a double team, especially when he comes off screens. Book Knight, count the basket. Again, the fluidity or the ease, Kevin, almost like he's on ice skates, and the way he glides into the basket. Here, a little between the legs, and then just a push, turns the corner, finishes. Chance for the old-fashioned three-point play, and here are the fans. Fourth person, foul. This was the game to bring the sign to. Boy, sparkly too. Festive Christmas spirit. Where's the tinsel? Bring some ornaments to the house. Yeah, this has been widely talked about. For UConn to be great this season, James Booknight may need to play at a superstar level. He is at that level today. 34 points for the sophomore from Brooklyn. Well, he's as impressive as any guard that we've seen this season. He would definitely rank in that top five or six in the country based on the early results or returns. A career day for Book Knight. Again, really impressive with UConn's ball screen defense. Swarming and crowding Zagorowski throughout. Now it's Mahoney with two to shoot. Book Knight got a piece of it. A hoist and a shot clock violation. He can score and he can suffocate you defensively. Well, there's that length. A good feat laterally in terms of not allowing an opponent to get that first step or an angle to the basket. Good stance. Tracing the ball with his right hand. Staying down. Gets all leather on the first. And well contested on the second shot. He's done that a couple times. The quick swipe, quick sleight of hands to affect shots. And he's close enough to the ball where he doesn't have to lunge or reach or put himself in a foul-prone situation because of that footwork and technique. Great effort from Whaley and Mahoney. But it was the Blue Jay who last touched it. So UConn ball with 13 on the shot clock. This one has been wildly exciting. UConn was down by 12 in the first half, and Creighton was just humming offensively. That defense you keep referencing really clamped down. UConn sliced it to a four-point deficit by halftime, took its first lead early in this half, and we've been trading leads back and forth. Cole draws the foul. And it's a chance to extend the UConn lead. A good change of pace by Cole here. That's one way to lull a defender to sleep is that hesitation just for a moment and then the blow-by. We got to see all blow-by here. But prior to that drive, just a second or two before, he slowed down and defense comes out of its stance and now you attack those feet and pick up a foul. Someone else other than Zagorowski may have to step up for Creighton because of the defense UConn has devised for this game. They are going to keep Zagorowski blanketed in a crowd, basically selling two players out to defending him when he comes off ball screens. Seven ties, 14 lead changes in this thriller. Jefferson puts his head down, rises and scores. It's actually good defense by Martin. Slid the feet, verticality, went straight up. Just uh, offense beats defense sometimes. I like
like this old-fashioned dribble weave action. Oh, drills the three. And that comes off what I call old-fashioned basketball. I used to see it in the 1930s and 40s, the dribble weave offense. Largest hole Creighton has been in today. Whaley with another block. The Big East leader in shot blocks. Book night? No. And it's a foul on Whaley. On his fourth. If it's not book night, it's R.J. Cole. How about UConn with a lead? today 34 by far a career high on 11 of 18 shooting yeah 18 points in the second half it just continues as the game goes along to play with an elevated level of confidence and just imposing his gifts and talents and will on this game December 6th UConn had to pause all team activities due to COVID protocols wasn't able to practice for a week as a team modified practice this week things have been very challenging and stressful for Dan Hurley's team but what was the one thing he told us he said the most encouraging voice the galvanizing and leader like voice has been book night all week leading up to this really difficult game and Kochbrenner misses a critical free throw Creighton had led for much of the first half fell behind in the early goings of this half this one's been played within a few points that's it the last 15 minutes of game time. Cole just buried a big three, long two, left it short. And UConn's return to the Big East. Is he going to come away with a top 10 win? Don't go anywhere. Great finish next. Round 15. UConn with a three-point lead. 2.45 to go. These teams have never faced off before. You just saw the point from Dan Hurley. These two coaches have met once before when Rhode Island sent Creighton home in the first round of the NCAA tournament back in 2017. Coach, we've got a thrilling one. How did UConn get back into this game after trailing by double digits in the first half? Well, as we've talked about throughout the broadcast, uh, the combination of defense and then Book Knight catching fire. And UConn wisely has continued to play through him. Great with no answers on shutting him down. Zagorowski misfires. Offensive rebound. Mahoney, pump fake, kicks it back out. This to tie the game. Ballack leaves it short, but he gets another chance. Bishop, a shot blocked with a foul. Now physical play in the paint to be expected in a Big East clash between Creighton and UConn. And sometimes it comes down to getting second shots, playing volleyball on the rim, being opportunistic, and getting yourself to the foul line. That's something that UConn has done well in the second half. Not only getting to the foul line, but converting, capitalizing from the charity stripe, as Bishop just does here for Creighton. Bishop has been ultra-reliable in the second half. 16 points. That one would have made it a one-point game. Instead, UConn holds the lead. UConn 11 for 11 from the free-throw line in the second half. That's been another difference maker as they've secured this two-point lead. On the other hand, Creighton has missed three times this half and six times total. Here is the superstar. Good Step back Mahoney. three. Yeah, excellent defense by Mahoney. Yep. Good contest. Leveled off the triple penetration. Careless pass, but Zagorowski gets it back. Wow. Wild sequence. Top of the key, three. And Zagorowski misfires again. Just can't buy one. That was the right choice, the right decision. Just shots sometimes don't go down. Creighton, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the nation. 
shooting 28% from deep. They've missed their last nine threes in a one-possession game. Book Knight leans in. Rebound, Zagorowski. Contested. Tough shot. The Jays can tie or take the lead. Whaley with another steal. Well, we've and he got the timeout. And we've seen that this entire afternoon. Any on-ball screen, the Huskies are alert and aggressive and just smothers Zagorowski. And it's led to turnovers and low percentage shooting by Zagorowski. But uh, Whaley there with the help, the textbook technique defensively, that's drilled on in practice, film work, scouted in terms of how to defend the on-ball screen action of Creighton. And part, it was a foul, not a timeout. It's on Zagorowski, his second. I'm wondering here on Creighton's final possessions, does Coach McDermott look at playing through Jefferson or Balak or Mahoney because of the smothering approach of this stout defense of UConn against Zagorowski? One out of two for Whaley. Less than a minute to go, and Creighton, once up by 12 in the first half, is down three. Bishop hands off to Jefferson. The lob back. Knocked away by Martin. But it stays here. The alert defense there by Martin and reading that looping lob pass was able to break it up. Take a look. Great timing here by Martin. I think the officials uh, got it right. Yeah, I know Martin's pleading his case. And why not? Can't fault him. So sure. Be a future lawyer. <laughs> Boy, this game has delivered, hasn't it? Yep, eight seconds. Got to be aware of the short clock on this out-of-bounds play as the officials continuing to look at it. But Martin's follow-through as he swatted that ball out of bounds is what I think will determine that this stays Creighton ball. It has to be definitive right. to overturn. And not definitive there. Nothing that would suggest otherwise. And you're right. Creighton to inbound with eight seconds on the shot clock. Got to be alert to the lobs and the slips to the basket. UConn has it not a knocked off a top 10 ranked opponent since the final four back in 2014. Zagorowski, again off the mark, stays here. Love the confidence that Coach McDermott has in Zagorowski and his teammates have in Zagorowski. Continuing to go back to your leader. Who is this one last touched by? Looks like Martin's left hand again knocked it out of bounds I see Creighton ball they have yep. the fingertips of Martin's left hand were the last to touch it same characters on this sequence as well Bishop and Martin I like the officials getting together they want to get it right it's frustrating sometimes as a fan or a broadcaster with the delays in the game the coaches as well get frustrated but getting it right communicating is what we all want. This one has been a treat. Now, fresh snow, 20 seconds here. No need to force. If you're Creighton, you've got time to get organized. Again, Jefferson, Ballack, Mahoney, all three are capable of playmaking and shot making. 35 seconds to go. Creighton down three. Underneath, Bishop felt nearly it. A three-point play. He has two free throws, and that, if it's on Whaley, is his fifth foul. Good out-of-bounds play there. A lot of action, movement, uh, misdirection as well. And then Bishop releases after setting the screen, and Whaley will foul out. Personal foul. 
Now that becomes big, it in is. particular if it goes to overtime. He has been key defensively for UConn today. Well, the resistance he provides at the rim and improving with his ball handling. He made some excellent passes and set his teammates up for baskets. So Adams replaces Whaley. Two free throws for Christian Bishop, who is two of four from the stripe today. He has 16 points. Another miss. Creighton down three. Eight of 15 from the free throw line. Two point game. 34 seconds left. Each team with two timeouts, and both are in the bonus. And press offense, important that UConn has good spacing in the backcourt, allow enough room to make a secondary cut to get a catch. It's Cole, Daphne, Adams, Book Knight, and Martin on the floor for the Huskies. He's strong with the basketball if you're UConn. At some point here, the foul is coming. Yep. There was about a three-second differential between shot and game clock, but there's the foul, and it's Gaffney, who has free throws. He is just 10 of 13 from the stripe this year. Third personal foul. Double bonus. 21.3 to go. Again, you go back to these situations being even more difficult because of the 17-day layoff between games. But uh, cool customer, ice in the veins for Gaffney. It has been a stressful, challenging, daunting two and a half weeks for UConn. Dealing with the pause. Limited practice time, last playing a game on December 3rd. And his Huskies team leads the ninth ranked team of the country by four. And Zagorowski has to go, 19 seconds left. Two possession game on the drive. Now it's a two point game and a timeout, Creighton. Yeah, good clock management. Creighton wisely not launching a rocket, but instead go right to the basket. Able to stop the clock set their defense. Now Coach Early setting up his press offense, ideally wanting his higher free throw percentage shooters to get the catch. Easier said than done, because Creighton will try and deny, switch. But getting the ball inbounds, number one. Number two, being strong with the ball once you do have the ball inbounds. And then stay low and pivot with your head up, because you're likely to be fouled immediately. And if you have any trouble on the inbounds, UConn with two timeouts, plus the possession arrow favors the Huskies. A thrilling Big East opener for UConn. Creighton is trying to close out quite a difficult week. It's third game, lost to Marquette. On the front end of the week, bounce back with a win against St. John's, down two with 13.6 to go. Gaffney to inbound again. And here we go. To Cole. He fell. There's a whistle. And Zagorowski is saying, wait a second. Boy, it looked like. He fell on his own. And it looked like it might have been steps initially. Pat Driscoll had a good angle. But they'll shoot free throws, I'm sure. Coach McDermott's going to be asking about the travels. There's a big slide there. No pivot foot established. Not sure where the foul is either. Instead, R.J. Cole is at the line to extend UConn's lead back to two scores again. 11.2 to go. He is a perfect six of six from the line. That's his first free throw miss of the season as well. Now Creighton, if the second free throw goes in by Cole, looking to make a quick hitter, three. If he misses something to the rim, mid-range or rim game, 
with a higher percentage look or trying to draw a foul. This is both. Creighton with a timeout. Nine seconds to go. Zagorowski with it. On the drive. Knocked away with four seconds left. Well, good call. Something to the rim. He had a wide open look before the deflection. And now baseline out of bounds play. Uh, defense. Shading the basket. Shrinking the court. Good defense again. Blanketed. R.J. Cole, the big man. Josh Carlton checks in. Well, that's emblematic of the way UConn has played tonight. Aggressive. Here we go. Creighton and down to Jefferson. Lowers the head. Puts it in. Point two left. And a great call by Greg McDermott. A little isolation. Letting Jefferson go to work. He's got the size advantage. And could see over the top of defenses. Excellent poise. Just put him in space. Off the baseline out of bounds. We should have known we needed overtime to determine this one. Yeah, just an elbow catch where he can operate from the elbow. One bounce and uh, poised, to say the least. Creighton with the surge at the end of this one. To overtime we go, tied at 66. All right, uh, DJ Carton getting ready to go. Marquette. Two wins over top 10 teams this season. Luke won against Creighton. Marquette trying to bounce back against Xavier, a team that hasn't played in 11 days. On starting on FS2, right after you're done on FS1, we'll come over. Tony or Bowen. Obviously, Jefferson on that out of bounds play was effective because they're not under the same duress. They're not blanketed defensively the way Zagorowski is. Doesn't mean Zagorowski's not going to be involved. He's still their quarterback, uh, but maybe utilize some of the other pieces to attack offensively instead of fighting that pressure or forcing the action against UConn's defensive pressure on Zagorowski. We jump it again. What a dandy of a ball game. Christmas comes early for us, Kevin. A hey, big East battle. I guess you've been nice and not naughty for us to get this game. <laughs> Jefferson on the drive again. This time he's whistled for the offensive foul, and Cole takes the charge. Well, Cole is everywhere. A glove defensively, like a Band-Aid adhesive. And Martin here sliding, but it's Cole that steps in, and it doesn't look as though... Jefferson knocked him over. There's no contact, but the angle again. Officials are also affected and with the disruption. Uh, they haven't had a normal runway into the season either. A long layoff for them because of protocol uh, of COVID-19. Yeah, no question a tough break for Jefferson, who sent us into overtime with his little floater in the paint. How about the acting by Cole? Talk about alert and aggressive. Gaffney, two to shoot. Up, under, falls in. Wow, got that shooter's bounce. And took his time. Didn't panic, didn't rush. Found the opening, puts it up. Gaffney's first field goal comes in the overtime period. Another turnover. Here he is on the drive again. Ballock goes straight up. Rebound to Mark. He loses it. Here come the Blue Jays. Wild sequences. Frenetic pace. This has been a physical battle between these two. Mahoney draws the foul on the larger Carlton. And Creighton's leading scorer at the line. And naturally, no one feels they've committed a foul. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> has there ever been a player that knows they committed a foul? Again, these are just aggressive actions uh, assaults on the rim putting the ball down classic brass knuckles rock fight big east basketball woeful free throw shooting continues creighton nine of 17 from the strike The Blue Jays' first visit to stores ever. And we're in overtime. Mahoney with just seven points today. 
One point game. Creighton had played from behind, albeit not by much, for most of the second half. The clutch Jefferson basket with .2 left in regulation to get us to overtime. Cole, top of the key, three, short. Good recovery there by Zagorowski to contest Cole's shot. Mahoney's 12th rebound, takes it in himself, a strong finish. Now, I like Mahoney as that four-man, sometimes three-man, and his versatility. He can play make, he can shot make, excellent judgments. Going through him will serve the Blue Jays well. Creighton's first lead since the 537 mark of the second half. Punch, counter punch, ties, lead changes. Uh, we've had it all. Some scrums on the floor. Excellent defense by UConn in particular, but a good answer by Creighton. Three oh six to go in overtime. That was a timeout called by UConn. It's been a while since the Huskies have knocked off a top 10 ranked opponent. By the way, that win against Florida, not just sent the Huskies to the national title game, which they subsequently beat Kentucky. Well, when UConn comes back to the Big East, it's a program that has four national championships. That's big. They are elite uh, because of their history. And we haven't even talked about the women's program, but uh, the men's program alone, those achievements, accomplishments, those banners, that standard of excellence, a high tide rises all ships in the Big East when UConn returns. You know, you know who else has been excellent as you see the, just the domination on both the men's and women's side as well who's been excellent today. You just saw an image of him, James Booknight, 34 points. Blossoming into a superstar before our eyes for the Huskies on 11 of 20 shooting, although late in the second half, it was others who stepped up like Whaley and Cole. Well, it's interesting too, the ebb and flow as we look at the numbers of this game. But big run by Creighton early to establish their lead. Big run by UConn to get back in this game and have a lead. And then an answer by Creighton with some counter punching here late and into overtime. So we're now into this extra period. It's been physical. It's been a gritty type of game. If, if you're the head coach in that huddle, what are the messages you're just trying to pass along in this tense moment? Well, I think if you're Creighton, it's about probing and exploring the inside with Whaley fouled out. Uh, that's a big part of UConn's defense. That resistance at the rim that he provides is no longer in play with him being disqualified because of fouls. So not forcing it inside, but Bishop has had success of late, and that's tied to Whaley being out. Creighton dealing with much more foul trouble than UConn at this point. Four players with four fouls, just one other for UConn. This is book night. Let's it go. Carlton chases. He's got a new 20-second shot clock. Good heads up. Hustle there by Carlton to create a second possession. Gaffney lost it. Retains the dribble. Up top to Cole. He wants the three. Down and out. Mahoney with his 13th rebound. Mahoney there blanketing book night him to get a catch on that possession and then comes up with a rebound as well. UConn down one. Mahoney spins off. It was the last touch by. It's going back to the Huskies. Well, that was a bit of a force by Mahoney. I like the aggressiveness, but once you take it in, you draw multiple defenders, now look to pitch it or pocket pass. You can sit down, reverse pivot, and kick it back out behind you to the three-point line. with the quality of play given the disruption and the uneven practices and 
games. Uh, these teams giving it everything they got. UConn's first game in two and a half weeks. It's down one. Four to shoot. Bishop with the defense. Cole doesn't recognize. We're getting later in the shot clock. It's a turnover, and the Blue Jays take it. Uh, and team defense helping one another, sliding feet, high hands on closeouts, and that leads to the shot clock violation. These players, these coaches are worn out at this point. A minute 35 to go. The Blue Jays with a furious surge at the end of regulation to force overtime. Zagorowski. Boy, he has struggled from deep, just one of eight from beyond the arc. And UConn can retake the lead. Book Knight, Carlton, back to Gaffney for three. Now, good possession offensively for UConn. They probed the inside, they played inside out, got an open look, it just didn't go down. One point lead, I don't think you need to launch a rocket. Get a touch, something towards the paint. Here's the man who sent us into overtime. Still don't need to launch a rocket. Zagorowski, lob. Bishop banks it off the window. Three-point lead for the visitors. Great 50 two. seconds to go. Great two-man game right there. That action. Coach Hurley going to get a timeout. But Zagorowski needs this well and just lifts it to the clouds. Let's go to the studio for a quick Marquette Xavier update first. It's underway in Cincinnati. Xavier and Marquette are playing right now there in the break. You see Marquette with a 10-8 lead early. That game can be seen on FS2, but as soon as it's over in stores, you'll be able to catch it on FS1, Kevin Lapp. Mike, this is a thriller. With 46.6 to go, Creighton leads by three after this acrobatic basket by Christian Bishop. Coach, he has 19 points to lead all Creighton scores. Well, and again, playing in pairs. We see Bishop with the handoff and then just rolls to the basket, uses his length fully extended to catch with two hands and to lay it off the window as Carlton comes down, timing-wise, doesn't get any better. But just how good Creighton is, especially offensively, and look, they have struggled at times today. You almost need to be a marathon runner to beat this team. You can't be a sprinter. Does UConn, who has not played a game in 17 days, have a little left in the tank for one more run with 46.6 left in overtime? Well, and I think Whaley fouling out uh, was the game changer from the fact that Coach Hurley doesn't have at his disposal his best frontline player. And Creighton with the depth to take advantage, uh, not in the foul trouble, uh, not having any player fouled out. And so they're going inside. Their baskets are high percentage looks, and that's intelligent as an approach. A uh, go the vulnerability of UConn not having Whaley in the game. It's Greg McDermott, a Dermott part, and his Blue Jays going to sneak out of stores with a win. This is Book Knight on the pull-up. Uh, he has gone cold. And UConn, all of its last six from the field. I like the call of Mahoney guarding Book Knight as well because of Mahoney's size and length. He's also stout. And uh, he's taken on the assignment of guarding Book Knight of late. And that's been an adjustment by Coach McDermott uh, that's paid dividends. And now UConn is going to have to play the free throw game. Two shots. Mitch Ballock with his first free throw today. UConn leads it by two possessions. 30.9 left. Creighton has two timeouts. UConn with one. Both teams in the double bonus. And you see in late game situations, road games, Creighton with an impressive victory at St. John's, and then here an opportunity, still time. But a five-point lead, championship teams do that. And don't underestimate the value of last year's Big East championship that Creighton brought home to Omaha. Creighton timeout, 30.9 left. You're right, the, the DNA of winning 
it's in the fabric of this rotation of this Creighton team that the expectations are as high as they've ever been for this program sitting at ninth in the nation. Well, they bring four or five starters back. They've got that nucleus. That's why UConn's going to have an outstanding season. They bring four or five starters back, but the programs are different places. Uh, Creighton is established under Greg McDermott, and Danny Hurley is beginning to build something special in stores, Connecticut. UConn led in the late stages of regulation at times by four, but then Creighton used a, a late surge, so Marcus Zagorowski free throws, and then Damian Jefferson's driving basket to tie things up at 66 and force overtime. UConn with just two points in the extra frame. Cole with a twisting attempt. Rebound down to Zagorowski, and Cole must foul. Good defense there by Creighton, having the discipline to not foul in that situation, and instead, Squaring up, verticality, arms and hands towards the rafters. I see the contest, verticality in play by Balak. Show the officials that you're not using your hands. They're straight up. Here's the bona fide All-American. See that expression on his face. That's what he looks like when he's scoring 20 points like he did against St. John's on Thursday. It's what he looks like today when he has struggled and his team's ahead by six. He's been instrumental even without scoring today. Well, what it shows you is steady stewardship, not using emotional fuel in the peaks or valleys, but instead, Joe Montana style, keep it even keeled and burn that fuel, that emotional fuel more effectively. He seems a bit... Uh, moving gingerly, and that's probably played a, a part in his performance. UConn needs a surge. 18 seconds. They've got to get a shot up. Three possession game now. Book Knights three. That's down. So it's back to a four point game. 11.7 to go. UConn uses the timeout. A little breakdown by Creighton. And Book Knight makes them pay uh, with another three-pointer. Finally didn't have a Blue Jay defender draped on him. Little penetration by Cole. Triple handoff. Gaffney gets it to book night. Just a high release. Pretty. The pronation of the wrist. Holds that follow-through. and Just rips the nets. And this will go down as one of the all-time great performances for Book Knight. 37 points, 12 of 13 shooting. UConn is back within four, so best case scenario, you need the steal. Plan B is all is the only other option you have, and that's to foul immediately. 11.7 to go in overtime. Well, this is a game that coaches watching players as well will understand how important baseline out-of-bounds plays are. That drive by Jefferson that you mentioned earlier came off an out-of-bounds play. That's executing to precision. It got them to overtime and ultimately it won the game for them. Ballock fouled. He went two of two at the stripe just a few moments ago. It stops the clock with 10.2. Uh, I think we learned a lot about both of these teams today. Creighton with its maturity, its experience. UConn, meanwhile, who is still in this, remains a four-point game after the miss. I think we learned about the physicality, the toughness, and the grittiness that this early team brings to the table. Well, and your point, we talked to Coach McDermott, and after their loss to Marquette, uh, they went back with a report card on things they need to improve upon. And one was taking care of the basketball, not having those live ball turnovers that cost them against Kansas and Marquette. It's a five-point game. This is Gaffney. Seven on the game clock. Let's it go. Short. Carlton. Clock winding down now. And that'll be just a footnote. Creighton with the last second Jefferson basket to force overtime wins it in overtime against UConn its first win ever in stores well as good as advertised it was special and Merry Christmas to you Kevin and safe to you enjoyed it partner for Steve up Kevin let's go to Mike and Jim in the studio 